guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is exceptionally happy and fun today because we are going to be talking about 2023 releases that I am super excited for in the new year. One of my favorite things about the year turning is all the new book releases we get. So yeah, I picked about 23-ish books, I think to match with like the kind of theme of like 2023, 23 books. I think I may have a little bit more, um, but yeah, we're just going to go ahead. I will do timestamps at the bottom of the screen um, or in the description box. That way, if you wanted a certain genre, you can go ahead and go there. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. Starting with fiction slash romance because a lot of my fiction is romance and then I have a few fantasy, so that will come after. But the first one we have is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I feel like this is an obvious first pick. I love Emily Henry. This will be her fourth novel. I'm pretty sure I'm very excited for it. I'm going to win have been the perfect couple since they met in college. They go together like salt and pepper, honey and tea, lobster and rolls, except now for reasons they're still not discussing they don't. They broke up six months ago and still haven't told their best friends, which is how they find themselves sharing the largest bedroom at the main cottage that has been their friend group's yearly getaway for the last decade. Their annual respite from the world, where for one vibrant blue week they leave behind their daily lives, have copious amounts of cheese, wine, and seafood, and soak up the salty coastal air with the people who understand them most. Only, only this year, Harriet and Wynne are lying through their teeth while trying not to notice how desperately they still want each other. Because the cottage is for sale, and this is the last week they'll all have together in this place, they can't stand to break their friend's heart, and so they'll play their parts. Harriet will be the driven surgical resident who never starts a fight, and Wynne will be the laid-back charmer who never lets the crack show. It's a flawless plan, if you look at it from a great distance and through a pair of sunscreen and sunglasses. After years of being in love, how hard can it be to fake it for one week? in front of those who know you best. I think that sounds super good. Um, obviously, they're gonna fall in love, so I'm very excited to see that little like second chance romance. Next two I have is actually a duology from Tessa Bailey. I'm pretty sure both of them are coming out in 2023, and that is Secretly Yours and Unfortunately Yours. So I think it's a duology. There may be a few more. It's called the A Vine Mess series, um, but I'm assuming the second book is like a companion novel where it deals with characters in the first book. So I'm just going to read the first book's description. The Welch fell hard for Julian Voss at 14 after they almost kissed in the dark vineyards of his family's winery. Now the prodigal hottie has returned to their small town when Hallie is hired to revamp the gardens on the Voss estate. She wonders if she'll finally get that smooch. But the grumpy professor isn't the teenager she remembers and their polar opposite personalities clash spectacularly. One wine-fueled girl's night later, Hallie can't shake the sense that she did something reckless, and then she remembers the drunken secret admirer letter she left for Julian. On sabbatical from his Ivy League job, Julian plans to write a novel, but having Hallie's gardening right outside his window is the ultimate distraction. She's eccentric, chronically late, often literally covered in dirt, and so unbelievably beautiful. He can't focus on anything else until he finds an anonymous letter sent by a woman from his past. Even as Julia wanders about this admirer, he sucked, he sucked further into Hallie's orbit, just like the flowers she plants all over town. Hallie is a burst of color in Julian's grayscale life. For a man who irons his socks and runs on tight schedules, her sunny, chaotic energy makes zero sense, but there's something so familiar about her, and her very presence is turning his world upside down. That sounds so sweet. Oh my gosh. It's kind of like a prince to lovers, also like rivals to lovers. It's a combination of things. It says, after losing her job and her fiance in one fell swoop, Natalie Voss returned home to lick her wounds. A few months later, she's sufficiently drowned her sorrows in car Cabernet, and she's ready to get back on her feet. She just needs her trust fund to finance her new business venture. Unfortunately, the terms require she marry before she can have the money. And well, dumped, remember? But Natalie is desperate enough to propose to a man who makes her want to kill him and kiss him in equal measure. August Cates may own a vineyard, but he does not know Jack about making wine. He's determined to do his late best friend proud, no matter what it takes. Except his tasting room is empty, his wine is disgusting, seriously, he once saw someone gag, and his buddy's legacy is circling the drain. No bank will give him the loan he needs to turn the business around, and then the gorgeous spicy Harris knocks on his door. Natalie has haunted his dreams since the moment they met, but their sizzling chemistry immediately morphed into simmering insults. Now, a quickie marriage could help them both, a sham wedding, a few weeks living under the same roof, and then they can go their separate ways, assuming they make it out alive. How hard could it be? There's just one thing they didn't account for. Their unfortunate, un unbearable, undeniable attraction. I think that sounds so fun, and I'm very excited for that little duology. Is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. 
and I've never actually read something by her. I know one of her novels this year got very popular, like A Part of Your World or something like that. Um, so I just decided to put this on because I thought it'd be fun to try it out. It says, Dr. Brianna Ortiz's life is seriously flatlining. Her divorce is just about finalized, her brother's running out of time to find a kidney donor, and that promotion she wants, oh, that's probably going to the new man, doctor, who's already registering 80 freaking 7 on Brianna's pain in the ass scale. But just when all systems are set to hate, Dr. Jacob Maddox completely flips the game. He sends Brianna a letter. A really good letter. Like the kind that proves that Jacob isn't actually Satan. Worse, he might be this fantastically funny and subversely likable guy who's terrible at first impressions. Because suddenly he and Brie are exchanging letters, sharing lunch dates in her sob closet, and discussing the merits of fr freakishly tiny horses. But when Jacob decides to give Brianna the best gift imaginable, a kidney for her brother, she wonders just how she can resist this quietly sexy new doctor, especially when he calls in, fa in a favor she can't refuse. So, that seems really fun. Workplace romances are really cute, and I'm very excited about that one. The one we have is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I love Allie Hazelwood so much. She is a guilty pleasure. Not even guilty because I'm proudly a stan of her, but this is going to be her third novel, and I just can't wait for it. Does the many lives of theoretical physicist Elite Elsie? Elsie, I think. Hannah Way have finally caught up to her. By day, she's an abject professor, toiling away at grading labs and teaching thermodynamics in the hopes of landing tenure. By other day, Elsie makes up for her non-existent paycheck by offering her services as a fake girlfriend, tapping into her expertly honed people-pleasing skills to embody whichever version of herself the client needs. Honestly, it's a pretty sweet gig until our carefully constructed Elsie version first comes crashing down, because Jack Smith, the annoying, annoyingly attractive and brooding older brother of her favorite client, turns out to be the cold-hearted experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career and undermined the reputation of theorists everywhere. And that same Jack who now sits on the hiring committee at MIT, right between Elsie and her dream job? Elsie is prepared for an all-out war of scholarly sabotage, but those long penetrating looks, not having to be anything other than her true self when she's with him, will falling into an experimentalist orbit finally tempt her to put her most guarded theories on love into practice. You can't tell me that sounds good. On the other like end of Allie Hazelwood, she has Loath to Love You coming out, which is a collection of all three of her novellas um, coming out like in a physical copy, which I will probably be picking up because I love Allie Hazelwood so much. I rated all of those novellas five stars. I think they are fantastic. Um, everything I've read from Allie Hazelwood has personally been a five stars. Like I said, I literally love it so much. I love the STEM romance. I would definitely recommend. We have Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Bradley Ga Graham is a pretty much perfect. Nope. Brad <laughs> Bradley Graham is pretty much perfect. He's a star football player, manages his OCD well enough, and comes out on top in all of his classes, except the one he shares with his ex best friend Celine. Celine Bangura is a conspiracy theory obsessed. Social media followers eat up her takes on everything from UFOs to holiday overconsumption. Yet she's still not cool enough for the popular kids table, which is why Brad abandoned her for the in crowd years ago. At least that's how Celine sees it. These days, there's nothing between them other than petty insults and academic rival rivalry. So when Celine signs up for the survival course in the woods, she's surprised to find Brad right beside her. Forced to work as a team for the chance to win a grand prize, these two teens must trudge, past, teens must trudge through not just mud and dirt, but their messy past. And as this adventure brings them closer together, they begin to remember the good bits of their history. But has too much time passed or just enough to spark a whole new kind of re relationship? So this is a young adult romance, which I didn't actually know um, before making it, but it's really fun and cute, so excited for that. I really like Talia Hilbert. True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. Felicity Fizzy Chen is lost. Sure, she's just got an incredible career as a beloved romance novelist with a slew of bestsellers under her belt, but when she's asked to give a commencement address, it hits her. She hasn't been practicing what she's preached. Fizzy hasn't ever been really been in love. Lust? Definitely. But that swoon where they can't stop thinking about him, all-encompassing feeling? Nope, nothing. What happens when the optimism she spent her career encouraging her readers starts to feel like a lie? Connor Prince, documentary filmmaker and single father, loves his work in large part because it allows him to live near his daughter. But when his profit-minded boss orders him to create a reality TV show, putting his job on the line, Connor is out of his element. Des desperate to find his romantic lead, a chance to run in with the exasperated busy offers Connor the perfect solution. What if he could show the queen of romance herself falling head over heels for all the world to see? Fizzy gives him a hard pass, unless he agrees to her list of demands. When he says yes and the production of the, love, the true love experiment begins, Connor wonders if the perfect match will ever be in the cue cards for him too. 
so that's with that one i love the single dad trope single parent trope i personally really like it so i'm excited to see that i do really love christina lawrence writing so looking forward to that what we have is meet me at the lake by carly fortune burke banks has wasted far too much of her adult life thinking about will baxter she spent just 24 hours in her early 20s with an aggravatingly attractive idealistic artist a chance encounter that spiraled into a day-long adventure in toronto the timing was wrong but their connection was undeniable they shared every secret, every dream, and made a pact to meet one year later. Fern showed up, Will didn't. At 32, Fern's life doesn't look how she once imagined it would. Instead of living in the city, Fern's back home, running her mother's Muskako <laughs> Lakeside Resort, something she vowed never to do. The place is in disarray. Her ex-boyfriend's a manager, and Fern doesn't know where to begin. She needs a plan, a lifeline. To her surprise, it comes in the form of Will, who arrives nine years too late, with a suitcase in tow and an offer to help on his lips. Will may be the only person who understands what Fern's going through, but how could she possibly trust this expensive suit wearing Mirage, who seems nothing like the young man she met all those years ago? Will is hiding something, and Fern's not sure she wants to know what it is. But ten years ago, Will Baxter rescued Fern, and she did the same thing for him. So that sounds super good. I really like Harley Fortune's debut novel, Every Summer After, so I'm looking forward to seeing like what this does. And Hide from the Light, which is the second book in the Things We Never Got Over series, which I read this past summer. So this is about Knox's um, brother. Nash Morgan was always known as a good Morgan brother, with a smile and wink for everyone. But now the chief of police is recovering from being shot and his southern charm has been overshadowed by panic attacks and nightmares. He feels like a broody shell of the man he once was. Nash, Nash isn't about to let anyone in his life know he's struggling. But his new next door neighbor, smart and Lexi Lena, sees his shadows. As a rule, she's not a fan of physical contact unless she initiates it, but for some reason Nash's touch is different. He feels it too. The physical connection the physical connection between them is incendiary, grinding him and making him making her wonder if exploring it is worth the risk. Too bad Lena's got secrets of her own, and if Nash finds out the real reason she is in town, he'll never forgive her. Besides, she doesn't do relationships. Ever. A hot short term fling with a local cop? Absolutely, sign her up. A relationship with a man who accept, expects her to plant roots? No freaking way. Once she gets what she's after, she has no intention of sticking around. Knock him out has a way of getting under people's skin, and once Nash decides to make Lena's his, he's not about to be dissuaded, even if it means facing the danger that nearly killed him. Oh god, that sounds crazy. I'm excited. Next, we have Final Offer, which is kind of funny. I'm I feel like I could read this. Um, it's actually the third book in a series that I haven't read, and the reason is I'm waiting to get to this book, and then I'm gonna just read all three of them. I can do a reading vlog if you're interested, but that is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. It's a Dreamland billionaire series. There's like three siblings. Each book is about one of the guys and their love stories. So yeah, this is the final one. Callahan. I'm the Kane brother everyone gossips about behind closed doors. Trust fund brat, washed up athlete, high functioning alcoholic. No one knows the real me but her. Lana Casillo, my childhood best friend and the only woman I ever loved. When I broke her heart six years ago, I promised to never return to Lake Wisteria. I kept my word until my grandfather's will changed everything. To receive my inheritance, I was tasked with spending the summer at the family lake house before selling it. The request was simple in theory until my entire plan blew up on the very first day. Turns out Lana doesn't just live at the house, but she claims, claims to own it too. Alana, falling in love with Callahan Kane was a mistake. He told her... He told me so before destroying my heart and our friendship six summers ago. When he promised never to come back, I foolishly believed him. But then Cal showed up again, intending to sell his grandfather's lake house. The biggest flaw in his plan? My name is on the deed. Tell me that doesn't sound good. I don't know the brothers, but I've heard Callahan is the best one. And I just, I just feel like I'm going to really like that one. But anyways, okay, the next one I have is The Summer Girl. This is, again, a series. It's by L. Kennedy. It's the third book in the Avalon Bay series. So you have The Good Girl Complex, Bad Girl Reputation, and then The Summer Girl. So this says, college student Cassie Soul hasn't spent an entire summer in Avalon Bay in years. Not since her parents divorced and her mother spitefully whisked her away to Boston. Now that her grandmother is selling the Boardwalk Hotel that's been in their family for five decades, Cassie returns to the quaint beach town, excited to spend time with family, bring in her 21st birthday, and maybe find herself a summer fling. She's ready for breathless, heart-pounding passion, and on her first night in town, she finds a perfect candidate, Tate Bartlett, Avalon Bay's fun-loving golden boy. Tate, sailing instructor and lovable player, is no stranger to flings. In fact, he's always down for a good time. But maybe not this time. The moment he meets Cassie, he knows she's not the girl you play games with, and the last thing she, he wants to do is risk breaking her heart. 
So despite her, his attraction to her, he turns her down, but the awkward hiccup doesn't stop a friendship from developing between the two. Tate even helps Cassie find the fling she's so set on finding, only it isn't long before he's wondering if he made a huge mistake. Cassie is gorgeous, hilarious, and frankly the coolest person he's ever met. He can't deny it anymore. He wants that fling now, big time, and maybe even something more. As Cassie and Tate walk the line between friends and lovers, they're about to discover that their situation is the least complicated part of this equation. Because Avalon Bay is full of secrets, and their relationship might not survive when one secret in particular comes to light. So, sounds super fun. Um, excited for that one. I I really like Elle Kennedy. That is called Summer Reading. I just found this on the Good List or Goodreads list because a lot of the ones that I just listed are well-known authors or second books in the series. So, if you haven't heard of this one, it's called Summer Reading by Jen McKinley. It says for Samantha Gale, a summer on Martha's Vineyard at at her family's tiny cottage was supposed to be about resurrecting her career as a chef until she's tasked with chaperoning her her half-brother Tyler. The teenage brainiac is spending the summer at the local library in a robotics competition and there's no place Sam, who's dyslexic, likes less than the library. And because the universe hates her, the library's interim director turned out to be the hot reader guy whose book she accidentally destroyed on the ferry ride to the island. Bennett Reynolds is on a quest to find his father, whose identity he's never known. He's taken the temporary job on the island to research the summer his mother spent there when she got pregnant with him. Ben tells himself he's not interested in a relationship right now, yet as soon as Sam knocks his book into the ocean, he can't stop thinking about her. An irresistible attraction blossoms when Ben inspires Sam to create the cookbook she's always dreamed about and she jumps all in on helping him find his father. And soon they realize their summer fling may heat up into a happily ever after. I feel like that is going to be like one of the next beach reads and I'm so excited for it. Um, pick that one up. I'm never vacation with your ex. This was another one I just randomly found and it's by Emily Whip Whipperley, I think. I'm not sure. Um, and it looks to be like a YA book. So yeah, YA second chance romance. So super excited about that. Yeah. Okay. It says 17 year old volleyball star Kaylee Jordan lives a life of player ranks, constant training, and a carefully created social media full of followers watching to see if she'll go pro out of high school like her famous mom. Her one refuge and the thing she looks forward to every summer, the vacation her family spends in Malibu with the Freemans. This year, there's only one problem. Kaylee and their son Dean dated for the past three months, and Kaylee just unceremoniously dumped him. Hoping to spare the worst summer ever, Kaylee comes to Dean with her unconventional solution. She's going to walk him through her rules for getting over an ex. When Dean grudgingly co cooperates, Kaylee's got her work cut out for her. But helping Dean follow her own rules starts starts becoming difficult when the pressures of Kaylee's family legacy and her perfect life start to feel like the less like a plan and more like a prison. And amid warm California nights and stolen laughs, Kaylee finds herself falling for Dean for the same reasons and some new ones. With her trip coming to an end, Kaylee has to make the complicated choice between doing what, what's expected and taking a second chance on love. Again, love second chance romances, so very excited about that one. We are moving on to the fantasy section. So the first one we have, I'm so excited about, it is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. This is a story about Oak. If you haven't read the Cruel Friends series, go read it. Stop watching this video. I don't even care. Go watch it. Um, yeah, I am so excited about this. So it says, a runaway queen, a reluctant prince, and a quest that may destroy them both. Eight years have passed since the Battle of the Serpent, but in the icy north, Lady Nora, the Court of Teeth, have reclaimed the Ice Needle Citadel. There, she is using an ancient relic to create monsters of stick and stone, stick and snow, who will do her bidding and exact, and exact her revenge. Surin, child queen of the Court of Teeth, and the one person with power over her mother, fled to the human world. There, she lives feral in the woods, lonely and still haunted by the merciless torment she endured in the Court of Teeth. She bides her time by releasing mortals from foolish bargains. She believes herself forgotten until the storm hag, Bogdana, chases her through the night streets. Surin is saved by none other than Prince Oak, heir to Elfame, and to whom she once promised in marriage, and who she has resented for years. Now 17, Oak is charming, beautiful, and manipulative. He's on a mission that will lead him into the north, and he wants Surin's help. But if she agrees, it will mean guarding her heart against the boy she once knew and a prince she cannot trust, as well as confronting all the horrors she thought she left behind. Guys, I... I'm so excited for this. Literally, I love The Cruel Prince. I actually reread it this year, and it's just one of my favorite fantasy. It, you have to read it, and I'm so excited for this little spinoff. I can't wait. I can't wait, and we're definitely going to see Judah Carded. I mean, we can't not see them, so yeah, okay. Next up is A Touch of Chaos. This is a Hades and Persephone's retelling. It's actually book four. Have, have I read the series? No, but I want to get the book so I can read the entire series. I'm not even going to read the description because I don't want to spoil anything for myself, 
but just know it's by Scarlet St. Clair and it looks like that but yeah anyways let's move on I have is a barbarian prize by ruby dixon she announced the fifth um special edition book so this book isn't new but the new cover is coming out so anyways i'm excited about this um yeah we're just gonna read the back of it there will be a reading vlog coming out for this it's hard being the most popular girl on the ice planet the alien men are falling falling all over themselves to impress me in the hopes that I'll take them to my furs. But they don't know my secrets, none of them do, and they don't realize that behind my smile I just wish they'd go away. I don't want any of them, I want someone else, someone with a gorgeous blue body, big horns, and the most intense gaze ever. He's the only one that knows the truth. Maybe with him I can work through my fears in the past, but I'm pretty sure he wants more than just a friendship. He wants, for he wants forever and I'm not sure I can give it. <laughs> I know, this is truly a guilty pleasure. This is a guilty pleasure, liking these books. I don't know, man, okay? I, I can't explain it. We have, and this is not confirmed, but on Goodreads, there looks to be a Crescent City 3, and I don't know the title. I haven't even read this series yet. I'm planning on reading it in 2023, but it is there under Sarah J Maas, so I'm excited for it if it comes out. And then the last fantasy one we have is The Soul of Ash and Blood. I read the first four books of the, the From Blood and Ash series this year. The third and fourth books weren't my favorite. I really, really liked the first and second book. So I'm hoping the fifth and sixth book will kind of be better. But the fifth one is up on Goodreads right now. So I went ahead and included it. It's Hawk's turn to tell the story. So I'm pretty sure we're just getting... Oh, wait. Oh my gosh, wait. Guys, revisits her first novel in her phenomenal Blood and Ash series, but this time it's Hawk's turn to tell the story. So, filled with new scenes, insights, and a few surprises, A Soul of Ash and Blood is a must read for fans of From Blood and Ash and a love story of Poppy and Hawk. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna love this because it's the first book told from his point of view. Okay, wait, I am so excited for that. I think that will be fantastic. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Our last section, I have three books left, and that is going to be our memoir slash nonfiction books. The first one I have is called Spare by Prince Harry. Um, so yeah, this is just his memoir. I think this is coming out in January. It only has, it has a less than three stars in Goodreads right now. So I don't know, it's not released yet, so people can't really be rating it. But I'm looking forward to hearing his story about his life and things like that. The next one I'm actually really excited about is Becoming Free Indeed, My Story to Sing. Disentangling Faith from Fear by Ginger Duggar. Whoa, whoa, not sure how to pronounce her last name, but this is Ginger Duggar, obviously from the Duggar family. I feel like we all know who the Duggar family is. And so basically, she um, is just talking about her experience, that transition. Obviously, a lot happened there. So, yeah, I'm very, I'm looking forward to that one a lot. The last book we have is What My Bones Know, a memoir of healing from complex trauma. I just thought this sounded really good. I don't know who Stephanie Fu is, the author of this, um, but I just thought it sounded amazing. And talking about her getting over these very traumatic events and like how she copes with having PTSD and other things like that. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. And yeah, she also has CPTSD. So those are all of the books. Let me know if there's any new releases I missed, any ones that you guys are excited for, if you're gonna be looking out for the ones that I told you guys about today. Yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys are enjoying Bookness and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace and love. Bye guys.